I never quite understood the concept of the monster-in-law until I met my husband's mother, Evelyn. From the moment I stepped into her life, it felt as if I had walked into a battlefield. My name is Rebecca, and this is the story of how I sought revenge against the woman who made my life a living hell. Evelyn was a formidable woman, with a towering presence and a voice that could shatter glass. Her piercing blue eyes seemed to hold a perpetual disapproval of me, as if I were an unwelcome guest in her son's life. But what hurt the most was that my husband, James, always seemed to side with her, leaving me to fight my battles alone. One sunny weekend, James decided it was time for us to pay his parents a visit. Despite my reservations, I agreed to go, hoping that perhaps this time things would be different. As we pulled up to their lavish estate, I couldn't shake the unease that settled deep within me. Stepping out of the car, I took a deep breath, preparing myself for what lay ahead. The grand front door swung open and there stood Evelyn, her perfectly coiffed hair framing her stern face. Well, if it isn't Rebecca, she greeted with a chilly smile, her tone laced with thinly veiled disdain. You certainly took your time getting here. I forced a smile and replied, Hello, Evelyn. It's good to see you. She glanced at my casual attire, a disapproving glint in her eyes. Oh, I see you didn't bother to dress appropriately for the occasion. James, you really need to teach your wife some manners. James, standing beside me, remained silent, seemingly caught between his loyalty to his mother and his love for me. It was a precarious position he often found himself in torn between the two most important women in his life. Suppressing my frustration, I mustered up the courage to speak. Evelyn, I appreciate your concern, but I am comfortable in what I'm wearing. Her eyes narrowed, and her voice dripped with condescension. Of course, dear. Comfort seems to be your priority. I felt a surge of anger rise within me, but I swallowed it down, determined not to let her provoke me. This visit was meant to be a peaceful one, an opportunity to mend fences and find common ground. Little did I know that Evelyn had no intention of making that easy for me. As we entered the house, I could sense Evelyn's disapproving gaze fixed upon me. She wasted no time in criticizing the way I walked, the way I dressed, and even the way I spoke. Her words were like daggers, piercing through my fragile heart. Rebecca, you really need to work on your posture, she remarked with a haughty tone. A lady should carry herself with grace and elegance, not slouch around like a commoner. I felt James shift uncomfortably beside me, torn between supporting his mother and defending me. It was a familiar pattern that had taken its toll on our relationship. Struggling to maintain my composure, I responded, Evelyn, I understand that you have certain expectations, but I am who I am. I cannot change myself to fit into your mold. Struggling to maintain my composure, I responded, Evelyn, I understand that you have certain expectations, but I am who I am. I cannot change myself to fit into your mold. Her eyes flashed with indignation. You should consider yourself lucky, Rebecca. My son is a catch, and yet you seem determined to squander this opportunity with your stubbornness. I bit my lip, fighting back tears and the words that threatened to spill out. Evelyn's words cut deep, reminding me of the constant battle I faced, not just with her, but with my own self-doubts. I couldn't let her break me. I had to find a way to stand up for myself, even if it meant taking drastic measures. Little did I know that this weekend visit would mark the beginning of a journey towards revenge where I would take back control of my life and prove that I was more than just an object of scorn. One sunny weekend, James decided it was time for us to pay his parents a visit. Despite my reservations, I agreed to go, hoping that perhaps this time things would be different. As we pulled up to their lavish estate, I couldn't shake the unease that settled deep within me. The imposing front gate swung open, revealing the meticulously manicured grounds of Evelyn's estate. The grandeur of the house itself was enough to make anyone feel insignificant. I took a deep breath trying to steady my nerves as we stepped out of the car. Evelyn appeared at the top of the grand staircase, her presence commanding attention. Her perfectly styled silver hair shimmered under the sunlight, and her steely gaze met mine with a mix of disdain and amusement. Well, well, if it isn't Rebecca, she drawled, her voice dripping with false sweetness. I suppose you finally found your way here. 
I plastered a polite smile on my face, determined not to let her snide comments get to me. Yes, Evelyn? It's been a while. How have you been? She offered a patronizing smile, her eyes scanning me from head to toe. Oh, you know, busy with important matters. Unlike some people, I have a life beyond superficial distractions. I clenched my fists, fighting the urge to retort. James stood beside me, his gaze shifting uncomfortably between his mother and me, a clear indication of the battle that waged within him. As we entered the house, Evelyn's disapproving gaze never left me. She took every opportunity to criticize my appearance, my manners, and even the way I spoke. It seemed like she had an endless arsenal of insults, and she relished in using each one to chip away at my self-confidence. Sitting at the dinner table that evening, tension hung in the air like a heavy fog. The fine china and silverware seemed to reflect the strained atmosphere. Evelyn's icy gaze was fixed on me, her lips curled in a smirk. So Rebecca, she began, her tone laced with contempt. Tell me, how did you manage to convince James to bring you here? Is it your charming personality, or perhaps your cunning? I glanced at James, silently pleading for his support. He looked down, avoiding my gaze, his silent speaking volumes. I glanced at James, silently pleading for his support. He looked down, avoiding my gaze, his silent speaking volumes. Summoning my courage, I responded. My voice steady, Evelyn, I didn't convince James to bring me here. We are married, and as his wife, I have a rightful place by his side. Evelyn laughed, a cold, mirthless sound that sent shivers down my spine. Marriage doesn't automatically grant you a place in this family, my dear. You have to earn it, and so far you've done a dismal job. My heart sank, but anger simmered beneath the surface. I couldn't allow her to belittle me any longer. I straightened my back, looking her directly in the eyes. Evelyn, I am done trying to win your approval. I am here because I love James, and I hoped that we could find some common ground. But if all you have to offer is disdain and hostility, then I don't need it. I am my own person, and I will not let you define my worth. The room fell into silence. The weight of my words hanging heavily in the air. Evelyn's face contorted with anger. But for the first time, I saw a flicker of uncertainty in her eyes. I had challenged her authority, and it was clear that she hadn't expected such defiance. James finally spoke, his voice wavering with a mixture of frustration and desperation. Mother, Rebecca is my wife, and I love her. I won't stand for you mistreating her any longer. Evelyn's face hardened, her voice sharp as she replied, You may love her now, James but you'll soon realize the mistake you've made. Mark my words. I glanced at James, grateful for his support, but uncertain of what the future held. The battle had been ignited, and I knew that, from this point on, there would be no turning back. Revenge was beginning to take shape in my mind, and I was determined to see it through. The tension in the air grew with every passing hour. As we sat around the dinner table that evening, Evelyn's insults reached a boiling point. She accused me of being a gold digger, of seducing James to get my hands on his wealth. I couldn't take it anymore. The floodgates of my emotions burst open, and I found myself engaged in a bitter argument with her. You have no right to judge me, Evelyn! I exclaimed, my voice trembling with a mix of anger and hurt. I love James, and our relationship is built on more than material possessions. Evelyn's eyes narrowed, her face contorted with rage. Love? Don't make me laugh, Rebecca. You're just a parasite clinging on to my son for all he's worth. You'll never be good enough for him. My hands clenched into fists, my heart pounding in my chest. I couldn't bear her relentless attacks any longer. With a surge of adrenaline, I rose from my seat, ready to confront her head on. You think you can treat me this way and get away with it? I hissed, my voice laced with determination. Well, think again. I won't be your punching bag any longer. Evelyn stood up, her towering figure casting a shadow over me. You dare to defy me, little girl? I'll show you your place. In that moment, the room erupted into chaos. Harsh words were exchanged, each one cutting deeper than the last. The air crackled with the intensity of our heated exchange. Suddenly, Evelyn lunged towards me, her hands flailing wildly. I barely had time to react as her blows landed on my body, one after another. 
Pain radiated through every fiber of my being, but I refused to let her break me. Summoning all the strength I had left, I fought back, defending myself as best I could. Amidst the chaos, I managed to land a well-placed slap on Evelyn's cheek, causing her to stagger back in shock. You will never hurt me again, I declared, my voice filled with newfound resolve. I am done with you and your cruelty. I deserve better. The room fell silent, the atmosphere heavy with tension. Evelyn's eyes burned with a mix of fury and disbelief. It was a pivotal moment, a breaking point that would forever alter the course of our lives. James, who had been a silent spectator throughout the altercation, finally found his voice. Mother enough! I can't stand by and watch you physically attack my wife. Evelyn glared at him, her voice dripping with venom. Your wife? She's nothing but a viper, James. She'll poison your life. James shook his head, his voice filled with determination. No, mother. It's you who has poisoned our relationship with your constant belittlement and abuse. I won't tolerate it any longer. Rebecca is my wife and I stand by her. The room hung in a heavy silence, the weight of our shattered family dynamic palpable. I took a deep breath, my body trembling from the physical and emotional toll of the confrontation. It was a turning point, a moment of clarity where I realized that I had to break free from this toxic cycle once and for all. As I made my way towards the door, Evelyn's voice echoed through the room, filled with venom and spite. You're making a big mistake, Rebecca. You'll regret this, but her words no longer held power over me. I had found my voice, and I was ready to embark on a journey to reclaim my life and seek the revenge I so desperately craved. With the echoes of our explosive confrontation still reverberating in my mind, I knew that it was time to take a stand. I couldn't allow Evelyn's abuse to continue, nor could I let her destroy my marriage any further. As I sat in our small apartment, contemplating my next move, my phone rang, interrupting my thoughts. I hesitated for a moment before answering, unsure of who could be calling at such a crucial time. Hello? I greeted cautiously. Rebecca, it's Emma, came the voice on the other end. Emma was my best friend, a fiercely loyal and sharp-witted woman who always had my back. Oh, Emma, it's good to hear from you, I said, relief flooding through me. I need someone to talk to. It's been a difficult few days. Emma's voice held a mix of concern and determination. I've heard what happened, Rebecca. And I'm appalled. You don't deserve to be treated that way. It's time to fight back. A surge of energy coursed through my veins as I listened to Emma's words. She understood my pain and frustration, and she was ready to stand by me. You're right, Emma, I replied, determination seeping into my voice. I can't let Evan and James continue to control my life. I want justice, and I want to make them pay for the pain they've caused me. There was a brief pause on the other end of the line before Emma responded. Rebecca, revenge may not be the healthiest approach, but I understand your need for justice. We'll fight this together, and we'll make sure you get what you deserve. A flicker of hope ignited within me. For the first time, I felt a glimmer of control over my own fate. With Emma by my side, I knew I had the strength to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Over the next few weeks, Emma and I meticulously planned our strategy. We consulted with lawyers, gathered evidence of Evelyn's abuse, and built a solid case. It was time to hit Evelyn and James where it would hurt them the most, their fortune. As we sat in the lawyer's office, reviewing the legal documents, Emma spoke up, her voice laced with determination. Rebecca, we have a strong case. The evidence of abuse, emotional distress, and the impact it has had on your well-being is undeniable. You deserve justice, and we'll fight tooth and nail to make sure you get it. I nodded, a mix of anticipation and nervousness fluttering in my stomach. Thank you, Emma. I never thought I would be in a situation like this, but I refuse to let them get away with what they've done. The lawyer, a seasoned professional with a sympathetic smile, joined the conversation. Rebecca, it's important to remember that the path you've chosen will be challenging. But with the evidence we've compiled and your unwavering determination, we stand a strong chance of securing a favorable outcome. As I signed the legal papers, I felt a sense of empowerment wash over me. The divorce would sever the toxic ties that bound me to James, and the lawsuit would hold both Evelyn and James accountable for their actions. 
It was my opportunity to reclaim my life and restore the dignity that had been stripped away from me. With the legal process set in motion, I knew that the battle was far from over. But armed with the support of Emma and my legal team, I was ready to face the storm head on. Revenge was no longer just a fantasy. It was becoming a tangible reality, one that would serve as a testament to my strength and resilience. The courtroom was filled with an air of anticipation as the day of the trial arrived. My heart pounded in my chest, a mix of nervousness and determination coursing through me. The courtroom was filled with an air of anticipation as the day of the trial arrived. My heart pounded in my chest, a mix of nervousness and determination coursing through me. This was the culmination of months of preparation, and I was ready to face Evelyn and James head-on. Sitting beside Emma, our eyes locked with unwavering resolve. I could sense her unwavering support. Her presence gave me strength and reminded me that I was not alone in this battle. As the proceedings began, the courtroom buzzed with the sound of murmurs and whispers. Evelyn, adorned in an elegant ensemble, entered the room with an air of confidence, while James slinked in beside her, his face etched with a mixture of guilt and apprehension. The trial commenced with each side presenting their arguments and evidence. My lawyer skillfully outlined the years of emotional abuse, the physical altercation, and the toll it had taken on my well-being. Witnesses were called, each recounting instances of Evelyn's harsh treatment and James's complicity in her actions. In the midst of the proceedings, Evelyn's lawyer, a cunning and seasoned litigator, attempted to undermine my claims. He raised objections, twisted words, and painted a picture of a manipulative wife seeking to exploit the wealth of her husband and his family. With a fire burning within me, I stood up to testify my voice steady and unwavering. Your Honor, I stand here not as a vengeful ex-wife, but as a survivor. I endured years of emotional torment and physical abuse at the hands of my mother-in-law while my husband stood idly by. I seek justice, not just for myself, but for all those who have suffered in silence. Evelyn's eyes narrowed, her face contorted with anger. This is all lies. You're just trying to ruin our family. We've done nothing wrong. The judge intervened, bringing order to the courtroom. Order. Miss Rebecca, please continue with your testimony. I took a deep breath, my voice steady. Your Honor, the evidence speaks for itself. I never wanted it to come to this, but I refuse to be a victim any longer. I seek a fair settlement. One that acknowledges the pain and suffering I have endured and allows me to rebuild my life. The trial continued, each side presenting their closing arguments. As I listened to the powerful words of my lawyer, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. This was not just about revenge. It was about reclaiming my dignity, my independence, and my future. The judge took a moment to deliberate before delivering the verdict. The room fell silent, the weight of anticipation hanging in the air. Finally, the judge spoke. After careful consideration of the evidence presented, I find in favor of the plaintiff, Miss Rebecca. It is clear that she has endured emotional abuse and physical assault at the hands of her mother-in-law and that the defendant, James, failed to protect her. I hereby grant a divorce, awarding Miss Rebecca with a fair settlement and half of the marital assets. A mixture of grief and satisfaction washed over me. It was a small victory, but a significant one. The battle was far from over, but I had succeeded in getting the justice I deserved. As I stepped out of the courtroom, Emma by my side, I couldn't help but feel a sense of liberation. I had broken free from the chains of abuse, from the toxic influence of Evelyn and James. Revenge, in its own way, had been achieved, but it was no longer my sole driving force. Looking ahead, I realized that my journey was not just about seeking revenge. It was about rediscovering myself, rebuilding my life, and finding happiness on my own terms. The courtroom victory was just the first step. A step towards a brighter future where I would no longer be defined by the shadows of the past. As Emma and I walked away from the courthouse, the weight of the battle slowly lifting off my shoulders, I knew that I had emerged stronger than ever. I was ready to embrace the possibilities that lay ahead and seize my newfound freedom with both hands.